Would you call yourself a progressive? And can you call yourself a progressive, I guess, with it and win that district? Well, as I've said uh, on cable news before, I really have no interest in ideological labels. I'm happy to talk through the issues and tell you where I stand. But I'll leave it to pundits and commentators on cable television to decide what label fits me best. Georgia's left appears to be having a bit of a labeling problem these days. You just heard Democratic congressional candidate John Ossoff dodging the term progressive. And earlier in the week, when the Wall Street Journal asked Senator Bernie Sanders if Ossoff was progressive, Sanders simply said, quote, I don't know, only to release a statement three days later clarifying his support. After landing 48 percent of the vote on Tuesday in a closely watched Georgia special election, Ossoff is heading to a runoff election against Republican candidate Karen Handel, a former Georgia Secretary of State. And joining me now is Theresa Tomlinson, the mayor of Columbus, Georgia. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Joy. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. All right, let's talk a little bit about Georgia's sixth district and whether or not right. a guy might want to be labeled a progressive in that district. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, well, actually, it's a very interesting district. Uh, those are moderate Republicans up there. I think a lot of the national coverage has been stressing that it's predominantly a Republican district, and historically that has been true. We've talked about how Tom Price has fared over the years, but you're talking business Republicans to the extent that they're Republicans. It's not a heavy ideological uh, a district. That's the district I grew up in. My parents still live there. My sister lives there, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, I think you can see that in some of the numbers. Some of the spin coming out of Tuesday, of course, has been that John Ossoff uh, only carried 48 percent of the vote, and somehow uh, that means that 52 percent of the people voted against him. Uh, well, I want to point out that 81 percent of the people then, under that analysis, voted against Karen Handel. Uh, so facts are stubborn things, numbers are stubborn things, and I would just uh, pitch a couple to you for your consideration. Uh, John Ossoff carried 88,000 votes. Karen Handel. 35,000 votes. Those are a lot of people he can bring back to the polls. Uh, he carried uh, 200 of the precincts. She carried eight. That's a pretty heavy lift for her. So I think you're going to yeah. be looking at voter turnout and motivation, and there's certainly some factors to consider there. Well, let's talk about that voter turnout and motivation. I yeah. mean, is this a district where you perceive that people are as hot on this election as the rest of us in the country are? Yeah, I mean, actually, they are. Look at the turnout. 193,000 voters came out for a special election. That's extraordinary. Uh, and so you, you have this um, very high level of interest. You have uh, John Ossoff carrying uh, these precincts well into the northern part of, of uh, District 6. And so I think it, some of the factors you need to look to. Um, Trump's erratic behavior. Business Republicans, uh, that does not set well with them. Moderates, does not sell, set well with them. It, it makes them very uneasy. And to the extent that he's going to inject himself into this race, that Karen Handel invites him into the race or embraces him and, and, and uh, projects that she will enable or facilitate his behavior, I think that that's uh, going to be a motivating factor. I'd say the, the second thing you need to look to is uh, the Freedom Caucus is, is really uh, getting a label of um, an element of dysfunction in Washington. I heard a voter say the other day, maybe that's the swap. That needs to be drained. And so I, I think to the extent that she is perceived to be a clear member of the Freedom Caucus, that may not fare well in that particular district during this particular mood. Uh, she's she's uh, largely seen as an ideologue in Republican circles. She's had a tough time in some other races, as you know. Um, but she, uh, and, and of course, had some trouble with the Komen Foundation. Um, people roundly believe that if you can politicize the fight against breast cancer, <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, you know, you, you are, uh, can politicize pretty much anything. And so yeah. to the extent that she's seen as an ideologue, I think that's going to be tough. And now you're starting to hear these uh, voter suppression issues, uh, which is going to mobilize more of the voters in the Stone Mountain, Doraville, Shambly area. And you see some elected officials just this morning calling for more early voting um, places, sites in uh, the southern part of the 6th District. If they're successful with the Board of Elections in that, I think I think you're going to see more early voting volume uh, in those heavily Democratic precincts. And so let's let's talk just a little bit about yeah a little more just to drill down because this is obviously Tom Price's uh, seat he, he held the seat Newt yeah. Gingrich has held the seat and so this fight uh, that feels a little bit like a proxy fight from last year over whether or not yeah. Ossoff is a progressive in this district would it even help him to come out and sort of be a progressive or his his more moderate it sounds to me like he is actually positioned the way you'd have to be to win uh, in in the sixth. 
Yeah, I think he is positioning himself very wisely, as I heard in that clip leading into this. Um, you know, he, he is uh, indeed progressive on issues of women's issues, health issues. He's talked about embracing the ACA, but with changes, pragmatic changes. And so that's a clearly uh, pragmatic pr progressive position, let's say. Yep. Uh, but he's quite a moderate on issues of security and jobs, economic issues. Uh, he, he is not for any tax hikes, things of that nature. Um, so you see him, frankly, reflecting the more moderate Republican uh, mood of that particular district. And, and you know, Tom Price did reign uh, for uh, quite some time, and Newt Gingrich, as you pointed out. Of course, both were seen, interestingly, particularly Newt Gingrich, um, you know, as part of that establishment. They had close connections. They were uh, weighty individuals, and I think that uh, the pragmatism of the 6th District likes the fact that they had uh, notable and well-connected uh, representation in Washington, D.C., but Tom Price never uh, really had serious challenge. I think one of right. his last challengers raised a, a whopping $8,000 or something. <laughs> so, uh, you know, had there ever been a serious moderate Democrat uh, contender, I'm not sure we would have seen those 27-point uh, uh, margins. Right. Well, I have to ask you a little bit about sort of Georgia, more, a little bit more writ large. I mean, you are the mayor of yeah. uh, Columbus, Georgia, second largest city in Georgia. You are obviously a woman yes. and a Democrat, uh, a white Democrat yes. in the South, which people thought there don't exist. They do. You are elected uh, in Georgia. Talk a little bit about Georgia. There's a growing black voter registered population. There was a large unregistered black yes. voter population. You just mentioned there were some issues with suppression. Is Georgia a state that Democrats should look to as a potential future purple state? And might there ever yeah, be a absolutely. woman governor, like maybe maybe you, for instance? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you're very kind, and I appreciate that. But but uh, but about Georgia, you're you're right. It is it, indeed. I believe it is purple, uh, and and uh, frankly, for the reasons that we're seeing uh, in the sixth district, uh, those uh, many Republicans are uh, moderate or business Republicans. First of all, particularly in um, the the suburban areas, like we've been talking about this morning. But people forget uh, that there's a, a very very thick band that runs through central Georgia. It's called the Black Belt for agricultural reasons, references to the soil, the fertile soil there. Um, but uh, it starts on one uh, side of the state with Columbus right. and goes through to Augusta and Athens. And, and uh, those are fairly uh, mid-sized cities, rural areas, if you will. Right. And uh, it's reliably Democrat. So when people start thinking about the urban centers and that all you have to do is carry Atlanta uh, sure. and all you have to do is carry Savannah, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And yep. I think you have to start looking at voter turnout in some of these uh, second, uh, second level cities as far as population mm -hmm. goes. All right. Well, we will definitely be watching Thanks. it. And uh, if you decide to change uh, your job uh, down there in Georgia, Teresa Tomlinson, we'd love to have you come back and announce it on the show. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. It's going to be an exciting year, I can tell you that. All right. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Thank All you right. very much. Cheers. And we have Thank a lot you. more coming up. So Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.